Thanks for checking out this review video. So um, I'm going to be doing more and more reviews on this channel. So if people have recommendations, things they really want me to look into, movies, shows, whatever, comment down there. But you have to be a subscriber for me to actually take that um, suggestion. So hit the subscribe real quick. Even if you're not going to make a recommendation, it can help out the channel a lot. And it kind of motivates me to do more content as I see more subscribers. Uh, also, you can hit that notification bell if you want to know every single time I put a video up. So that would be great. Thank you. That out of the way. Let's talk about this. You saw the topic. It said, I think, if I'm if I'm thinking correctly what I'm actually going to put on as the title, um, what people are not saying about the Umbrella Academy on Netflix. So... I've mainly, and may, maybe you're the same, I've mainly just heard really positive things about the Umbrella Academy, but I also feel like those positive things are said early on when someone just starts watching it, and then they don't say anything after that. There have only been a few very small instances of people going all the way through and saying, hey, I finished the series, it's outstanding, or I love it, or it's good, or whatever. It's mainly just people seeing the first few episodes and being like, hey, this is awesome, this is interesting. And then they don't say anything after that. Well, I think there's a reason for that. So for that reason, you're getting a lot of positives and then people just shut up. So you're not hearing the negatives. So I'm sure there are other people saying negative things about it out there. But me personally, I wanted to make this video because I'm feeling very much like this was a mishandled show. There was a lot of promise there. So let me tell you, I was on board the first two, maybe three episodes, I was telling people, hey, this is really interesting, you really want to watch this, it's looking good. And it was, it was looking good, because the story setup was so interesting, it had so many awesome possibilities. No one can deny that the setup of this show isn't great, because it is a great setup. Interesting characters, at face value at least, interesting characters, an interesting plot that reveals itself, basically. And you're like, man, this could go so many ways. This could be so interesting. But the problem is the execution was not there. And I'm not talking about execution from, like, directing, acting, cinematography, that type of stuff. I'm talking about the execution in the script. The story is bad when it comes down to it. It is, I mean, there's no way to put it. It's it's not good. It's not a good story. It's not a well-developed, well, series of scripts, really, because it's 10 episodes. But they needed to spend more time going over those scripts. It seems to me they put a lot into the first two or three scripts. And then after that, they started putting less and less and less time into it. Or maybe they were just reviewing those scripts less and making edits. I don't know. But the other thing is this is based on a comic book that was written by Gerard Way, who is the lead singer of My Chemical Romance, which a lot of people don't know that before he was successful and known for My Chemical Romance, Gerard Way was into doing cartoons. He worked for Cartoon Network. He's been involved with comic books. So when people are like, the dude from My Chemical Romance, he has a background in comics. He's been doing that type of stuff for a while. So just know that. The music came after all his animation and things like that. So just know that. But anyway, so I don't know. I haven't read the comics. I don't know if the comics are better. I could definitely see where the comics and this type of storyline would translate much better within the comics because you don't have to add as much stuff to it. Like comics are a lot more bare bones with the story because the, they just want to like hit with the panels the most important stuff because it's pretty limited the space that they have. The problem with something like a Netflix series is I feel like a lot of times they feel like they have to hit a certain number of episodes and a certain runtime. So they're always looking for at least 10 episodes, sometimes 12 or 13. Those seem to be the numbers, 10, 12, or 13. And then they just end up stretching things out because they feel like they don't have the material story-wise. So they start adding all this side stuff or they start adding extra dialogue that doesn't mean anything to just kind of stretch out the scenes and get to that padded time. And then each episode, they feel like they have to make about an hour. But this is the problem. Netflix, or at least people working on Netflix shows, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it very wrong. Because you're a much different platform, because you're not television, you're not cable, you don't have to hold to those norms. 
take the story you have, a good story, and work it out over however many episodes are appropriate for the story to tell a good story and do it based on what you need, you know? And, and if it's a situation where it's like eight episodes or six episodes or something like that, people are going to be fine with that because people will binge. They always have more stuff to go watch. People are not going to be mad and say, oh man, I really wish was, this was more episodes. If you give them a good story that takes care of itself. Um, because people don't, there's no shortage of stuff to watch on Netflix. People aren't going to be like, well, well, now what do I do after I finish this show? There's no shortage. People, like myself, have a laundry list of shows and movies that they need to get to. So that's fine. Um, the other thing is, like, if, if you're going to have, like, six or eight episodes or something like that, like, they can even be, like, one of the episodes is a half an hour, one of them is an hour, one of them is 45 minutes, one of them is even 36 minutes, like... You don't have to have certain times. And I feel like it's just this mindset that they're stuck in. And that's a problem. And that's a big problem with the Umbrella Academy. So I actually took down some notes. Bear with me if some of it I have to like filter through with this ep uh, this video. Because when I was kind of writing up these notes, it was when I had just finished the final episode of Umbrella Academy. And I was really tired. I was laying in bed. So some of this stuff is like sleepy Carlin writing. So... So, these are, okay, well actually I was going to get to my gripes with this, which you've already heard a little bit, but I, I should say the positive things real quick. The, it looks really good. The directing is well handled with, you know, actual like direction of characters within the scenes. The acting for the most part is well handled, except Ellen Page, I will say, I don't know if it's the way her character was written or the way the director told her to do the character or her acting, but it comes off as bad. Like I've seen Ellen Page in quite a few things. I mean, she was in Inception. She was in Juno. Um, I know I've seen her in at least one or two other things that I, I can't think of at the moment. So she is a good actress. She is, she is very good at what she does. It just felt kind of phoned in, in this. And, but the thing is, I don't know if that was, her phoning it in, or it was a director saying, this is how you need to act, or if it was a script, I don't know. And it's always hard to know that kind of stuff, but her performance just, and that character, honestly, is not good. So anyway, that leads me to my first gripe, which is, oh, sorry, one more positive thing. The music. The music is very well done. The, the music choices on the songs and the way it's integrated in the scenes is awesome. That's what they did really well. But then it just kind of seems like this this whole series was made to be like a bunch of music videos. Which, you know, it's fun when the music's going on and the scene is good with it, but it's not fun when you're trying to watch an actual show. So anyway, the, the three, there were only really three interesting characters in this show. Which, by the way, I'm not going to do spoilers. I'm going to keep this as spoiler-less as possible because if people still want to watch it. Um, there are only three characters that are all that interesting, and I can say them up front. Five, Klaus, and Hazel. That's it, because they're the only ones that are developed really at all. It has a, a good amount of characters, and almost all of them, other than those three that I named, feel like there's no development whatsoever. You get almost no backstory on them to make you feel for them, to make you connect with them, to give you any sort of interest in these characters, and then they just try and throw things in there to be like, oh, you know, you should be emotional about this, look what's going on with this character right now, but you're just like, I can't care, because I have no connection to them, because you just like, started right here in the story, and we're just like, oh, they'll just connect with them anyway, for no reason, we'll be fine. You didn't develop them, and that's a problem, and this is where... They, they needed to take the story a little bit slower in the sense of developing characters. They slowed it down in other ways that were totally unnecessary. So they didn't use their pages of the script wisely. They, they just kind of padded it with fluff where they were padding it. When, when they were padding it, they should have padded it with stuff that was actual like character development and character backstory that matters, that helps connect a person to these characters. So that's a big problem. There are only really three characters anyone cares about. 
and you get a good amount of time on screen with a lot of the characters so it's important that you make all these characters interesting or all these characters able to be sympathized with or hate them even like get get your hatred to a certain degree for the villains you know so it's just i don't know so I talked about, the, yeah, the, the, there are the emotional moments where you should be feeling something, but you just don't because the groundwork was not laid for you to actually feel those emotions for those characters because they're, it's just not done well with the characters. Uh, things happen for no reason in this. There's a lot of kind of uh, lazy uh, script writing with it where it's kind of like, and then this happens just because. Like, it, it doesn't make sense within the world that's been created and it also doesn't make sense with the personality of a character and their motivations. There are many, many times where a character set up a certain way and they react very differently in, in a certain situation. And you're like, based on what we've seen from this character, this character would not act this way right now. They would 100% not do this. This makes no sense. And there's a lot of those moments that just come out of left field. And there's one character... <laughs> In particular, I'm not going to talk about it because it might give some things away, but there's one character in particular who just keeps harping on this one thing that's kind of out of character, and then it becomes like part of character, but at the same time you're like, but it makes no sense, and it specifically makes no sense when it's repeatedly happened and other characters are kind of bringing things to that person's attention saying, yeah, you don't really understand this, and but they just keep going with it and it makes no sense it makes absolutely no sense so that's another big problem there are a lot of illogical choices with the character development too uh that kind of rolls into the same thing i'm kind of just reading what i wrote i don't really um there are the odd detours i talked about this kind of side things where they could have been using that to develop characters more or give more backstory they'll just kind of be like and now we're doing this thing over here and you're just like why like, for what reason? I, I just don't get it. The other thing is there were a lot of, um, with filling up that time, there were a lot of questions there of interesting things that they just didn't even address. Like, they could have been taking that time to address those interesting things, and they just didn't do it. it it's just this instance of you had extra pages in the script to fill, and you could have easily filled it with interesting stuff on things that people who were going through the show or would be reading through the script would be like, I want to know about that. That would be interesting. And it wouldn't even necessarily take all that much time, but you did, they didn't do it. They just didn't go for it. And instead just added a bunch of pointless dialogue or a few scenes that just made absolutely no sense, had zero impact on anything. And it's just it poor, poor choices, very poor choices. Um, they had a lot of comedic, they tried to like mix comedy into this show, and there are times where it really does work, and it's usually more early on in the show than later on, but there are so many times where it just feels like the comedy is shoehorned in, and there will be like something really intense and interesting going on, and then they throw in some comedy, and instead of it doing what it can in, like Marvel films, I'll say, Marvel films do a really good job with injecting comedy appropriately where it's kind of like you you laugh just a little bit and then you can easily get back into the drama or the intensity or whatever's going on but the way umbrella academy did it it was the opposite like it just like jarred jarred you out of what you were into at the moment and you're just like wait what like because first of all a lot of the the comedic stuff wasn't even funny like it, it wasn't funny and then when they chose to inject it it just killed the scenes where you're just like into something and then they throw out this terrible joke and then you're just like, wait, what? Like, why, why are we joking at this, at this moment? Stick with the action or stick with the drama. Like, can we focus here? It's like, it's totally like this, this, uh, huh? Huh? oh, I got distracted. Let's get back to what we were doing. I don't know. It's just... Okay, so my next thing, um, yeah, it was obvious, I wrote down that it's obvious that the time was being stretched. It's very obvious if you watch this. As the episodes go on, you can just be like, oh man, they're so wasting time. But like I said, in the first like two to three episodes, it's pretty tight, it's good, 
And then after that, it's like, yep, they're just wasting time. Um, plenty of plot holes. I'm not even going to go into it because I said that I'm going to keep this spoiler free. But just know going into it, there are a lot of plot holes in this. That, Like, once again, with the things that don't make sense, in the major plot line, there are things that don't make sense. Plenty of things that don't make sense. And that's whether it's the motivations of the characters like I was talking about, and it makes no sense why they would do things because the way they created that character... Or the way the world was, the universe that they created in the show was created, things don't make sense in there. They're also just dumb choices. They could have come up with better stuff easily. And it goes back to what I was saying before with the script, man. The script should have been read over multiple times. It should have been gone over a lot, each script for each episode. And I think maybe that happened for the first two or three episodes. But after that, they were just kind of like, eh, whatever. Um... The many questions are, are not answered and it just makes you even more pissed off that they have all this pointless stuff in there because you're like, spend your time more wisely. Give us answers to these things that we actually care about. Um, yeah, main plot, it is poorly developed. It seems like it's kind of thrown together at parts. It seems in the beginning like they know exactly where they're going. And like I said, it sets up an, a potentially awesome plot line, a potentially awesome story. And then it just falls apart over the course of a bunch of episodes leading all the way to the end where you're just, at that point, you're just exacerbated and you're just like, could care less. This is just, you like, you know it's not going to go anywhere good <laughs> at that point. When you get to that final episode, you're like, I just know it. Um, and then flashbacks. They had so many flashbacks in this that... It got tiresome, and I was just like, oh, we're doing another flashback again. Great. Because the thing is, you can use flashbacks appropriately, but I don't feel like they did. They put a lot of flashbacks in where you were just like, okay, we like you already did some flashbacks covering this stuff, and you got your point across, or why are we watching this flashback? It seems to be for really no reason. But that's it for me. I don't want to keep going on this. I mean, I'm at se a little over 17 minutes at the moment. As you can tell, this is kind of more of a rant. I might may put in the title that it's kind of a rant because it is like this show. It was very promising. Those first two or three episodes, it was very promising. And then how hard it fell after that. It was just a fast downward trajectory. And it's really disappointing because I felt like a great opportunity was squandered. It does make me want to check out the comics because maybe the comics are significantly better. Um, so... I mean, I'd be interested in checking that out, maybe, but I don't know. I have heard people saying, before, saying someone I know who uh, at my work was saying that someone watched through it all, and they were like, he was like, does it get better? Like, is it good in the end? And they were like, I mean, it's better than Iron Fist. And it's like, <laughs> that's not, like, that's not a compliment at all. Like, everything pretty much is better than Iron Fist. Iron Fist was a pile of trash. And I feel like they make a lot of mistakes that Iron Fist made, honestly, with, you know, padding the time, feeling like they have to have a certain length of episode and a certain number of episodes, all that garbage. But I don't know. I think people's excitement with this show spawns a lot from the fact that Netflix is currently losing or has lost pretty much all of their Marvel shows. And I think people, that, that makes them sad because like Daredevil was really good. I Luke Cage was really good. Jessica Jones, Punisher, obviously Iron Fist was garbage. Defenders wasn't very good. But a lot of the shows were good. And I think that kind of makes people sad. So when Umbrella Academy showed up, people were like, this is superheroes. And it, over those first few episodes, people were like, all right, you know, maybe they don't need Marvel. Maybe they can do this on their own. There's enough material out there that they can keep going with these superhero shows and are, you know, the void that will be left from those Marvel shows will be handled by Umbrella Academy and all these other things. So I think people got are too optimistic about it um, and they, they just want to love it and it just, you know, just didn't happen. But all of this said, ran over, that's just my opinion. And that's the disclaimer to this. This is 100% my opinion. I was very passionate about it, obviously. But I also re recognize that I, there are people out there who legitimately like this show. And I can understand that. I, I get it. I get it. It's just for me, for who I am, not my thing. And there were a lot of things that made me 
relatively upset about the execution of it and everything. But I would like to hear from you people. People who actually legitimately liked it, comment down there and let me know. You know, and, and we can have a back and forth on it and, and kind of debate this thing civilly, in a civil way. Because in the end, it's just a TV show. You know, whenever I review movies, review TV shows, whatever, these are all opinions and in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really matter, but it's fun to talk about, be nerdy and everything, you know. So anyway, thank you everyone. Once again, please subscribe if you can for me. Comment, well, why I say if you can? You can. It literally takes a second, so please subscribe. Uh, hit the notification bell if you want to know each time a video goes up. And then comments down there, let's talk about this a little bit further, and then likes if you can, if you want to, whatever. Anyway, thanks everyone for checking this out, and until next time, keep it brutal.